Mark. All right, hello again to anyone watching these Kaijudo videos. Uh, today we're going to be going over a, another match from the uh, Kaijudo Open Tournament that I'm hosting on the Rangers Dojo Discord group. And once again, I have uh, Stens the Boss joining me to help with the commentary. What up, How's it going? Thank you. Yeah, thanks again for coming on. It was a of pleasure course. to have you last time. So uh, this time around, it's going to be a match featuring myself on the Light Nature Ramp deck and uh, playing off against Andros on Light Dark Midrange. Um, should be interesting. I don't know. Do you want to give some of your thoughts? Do you have any thoughts on the matchup going in? Um, uh, I think that I, I want to give the slight... How do I say? Uh, matchup advantage to Modest, because I think Andros' deck, uh, you know, there's different ways to build mid-range. That's why it's mid-range. You could build it kind of more to the aggro-y side. You could build it more towards the control-y side. And I think Andros just needed a little bit more of an aggressive turns two through four in order to mm -hmm. really get under your deck. Because your deck, uh, I, I hope this doesn't come off as rude in any way, but outside of the Iron Will Trees and the Lemons, you have literally zero to do to to actually contest the board. Yeah, and... I'm just like relying on Shield Blast and just like racing up to mm -hmm. an Andromeda or something like that. Yeah, and with a place at a Verdant Helix, uh, Ramp is almost draw because mm -hmm. you're taking stuff from your deck, putting it into the Mana Zone, and then you can recur that later. So all of those resources yeah. in Mana sort of become like a pool that you can draw from after the fact. So you don't even care that much about ramping your big things. Obviously, Verdant Helix is kind of slow, but... Um, yeah, yeah, no, it just helps for, like, the attrition -y games. It just, like, gives me a really powerful late game because I can just, like, rebuy Cassiopeia's, even stuff like Arbiters. Mm -hmm. It just, like, gives me a lot of access to board clears. For sure. Um, yeah, it yeah. just uh, ties the deck together a little bit with yeah. the Helixes. Because um, yeah. obviously on the front end, just like a plus one ramp card like Mana Storm is really good, but mm -hmm. yeah, late yeah. game you want to draw more bombs and Helix is kind of more bombs. Yeah, but the, yeah, like so, said, yeah, like like the only the only point I was trying to make. Sorry, not to talk over you. My bad. Um, the the only point I'm trying to make is he's got to get under you because outside of a Agarix play that like sacks three things, he's not getting bigger than your board, and mm -hmm. mid range doesn't really go very wide. So if you get to the late game where you can play all of your big stuff, uh, that's yeah, usually going to be game. He's not going to have it. And a lot of his mid-range packages like Vang and Lyra and Serpents to some extent, they're mostly suited towards beating up on like aggro decks. Yeah, and exactly. there's pretty much none of them in the field from what I remember. So yeah, it was a bit unfortunate for <laughs> Andros's positioning in the meta. Yeah, like a lot of his cards are not too like the Agrix late game especially is not too relevant, and it's like better as a top end against a control deck that's like using a lot of removal spells, mm -hmm. which my deck isn't really doing. So yeah, it's closer to like a Gagargon than than the Agrix that you'd expect, I guess, mm -hmm. which is a little unfortunate for the card. Mm -hmm. So yeah, like you said, he's gonna try to get under me, I guess, and like Laws is the like the best card in his deck by like a mile, like, like oh yeah, for five, sure, for sure. Miles. Like it's laws and then storm spark. Somewhat cold. Yeah, my card deck is like somewhat cold to that card, or not somewhat. It is like very cold to that card. Mm. Um, so like, yeah, that card is just really strong because I went with like a really spell heavy ramp package, or a really spell based ramp package, and yeah, that card is just really good versus me. So if he sees it, uh, it'll be really tough. Mm -hmm. like yeah him just like curving into laws with like like lost patrol laws and then like the like you said he doesn't have like enough early game to like go why he doesn't have stuff like finbar like a light water dark deck would to like really turn the corner and put on the offensive pressure so he's more using lyra mm -hmm. right and then mm -hmm. like that's kind of what he's hoping for is like mm -hmm. just curving into a double breaker and just like turning the corner yeah but even um, then like his big like what are supposed to be like huge tempo pay plays to like really contest the board? What does Lyra hit? What does Vang hit? Like yeah, I mean, you Lyra, hit almost like, nothing. Just, yeah, I mean the idea I guess like Lyra just freezing a lemon is pretty good in some spots. Like, mm -hmm. Just so I can't chump block with it and like ramp up is like it's obviously not like game like it's not insane, but it helps like just having that yeah. Lyra as like the play. And then mm -hmm. obviously he's got Mesmerize and Spire Puppet, so he can like just kind of sit back 
hopefully like build up something overboard, interact with me and like, so that I'm kind of just draw passing and then it makes it a little awkward. And then, yeah, he's got some tools, but overall, like if we get anywhere to the late game and he's not insanely far ahead, he's going to be in a really tough spot mm-hmm. for sure. For the most part. Yeah. If he, I think if he doesn't win by turns, like maybe eight ish, it's probably unwinnable. Yeah. But like, I mean, yeah, I think the games that he draws keeper laws will look a lot different than the ones that he doesn't. For sure, for sure. But yeah. Right. Shall we get into the match? Sure. Sure, All we can get, right. get going. So, uh, I got one. the match here. Game one. Um, I've already skipped us to the draw. This is Bone Blades, as you can read, hopefully, and this is Terra Pit. Uh, we're playing with different arts, and um, sometimes they kind yeah, of break. Yeah, those are the... But... The shiny versions, the premium yeah. versions, which you unfortunately haven't unlocked. Oh, and I have the Reaven, so... I haven't I haven't paid yeah. for my cosmetics, my bad. Free to play B2A, so BT dubs. You can so. Mm. Interesting. Cockatrice is a little... <laughs> a little bit scuffed. Sometimes yeah, jank. I believe... I believe uh, Andros wins a die roll. Mm. Yep. And I think he chooses to go first. I'll hit play. And also, yeah, the opening hands. I mean, his hand is like not that great. Mm. Lots of expensive stuff. The Bone Blades and Terra Pit, not very good. I mean, Bone Blades mm. can answer a, a like a, an Iron Will tree, I guess. Mm. He did get the Skull Cutter at least, so he can, if he wants to, he can start hitting shield right away, which is kind of critical in this matchup. So, yeah, but I don't know if I would want, I don't know, it's really tricky. If you want to give me the extra cards, like mm. I feel like you more want to just like build up a board. As mid range though, I, I I almost would play this as a tempo deck. I would almost I would kind of play this as a tempo deck. Like, well, yeah. if I don't get under you by like turns four to six, and like establish big board that I should be winning by like eight to nine, I yeah. just don't think you get there. That but that's that's me personally. I just want to play tempo all the time. So I, I yeah, acknowledge I that might be a know. poor standpoint. If just like a lone skull cutter is not gonna get there, I think you have to play a little bit more of like a build up a board and like go for kind of a two turn kill. Oh no, for sure. Like, like so, a long skull, skull cutter isn't isn't anything. But my my point being, like maybe he draws into more, right? Maybe maybe he yeah. can kind of like draw into supporting that line. But yeah, that's fair. The problem is like he hasn't even seen a light mana, which is really unfortunate. Which also like shuts off a lot of top decks. Mm-hmm, for sure, there's like a lot of like a lost patrol. He can't even cast if he draws it. Keeper of laws, like he still mm-hmm. can't cast if he draws it. Yeah. Hmm. This is kind of a tough mana decision. Uh, watching you mana a lemon against a mid range deck makes makes me kind of take the read that yeah he's probably got a lemon in hand. Yeah, it's fair. I forget how I play this. I feel like my some of my decisions were not like super great in some of these games. I mean, it's the beauty of hindsight, right? Yeah, I think... no poke here. I agree. If you don't back it up with the second skull cutter, no poke. Here, I don't know. Probably charge like maybe one of the energize. Or... I charge root. Root. Because yeah. they're just not going to do anything with it. And like everything else, you have some utility. Yeah. And I decide not to play the lemon. Yeah, uh, yeah he makes, chose not to sense. poke. So if he, I think if he chose to poke, he can slap the lemon down. And I don't even care if he pokes. Like I'm kind of happy if he does. I think the this set us up like it's kind of weird because. Like, it makes sense to go Lemon into Reap and Sow, but then I'm thinking, like, I'm going to go next turn, I'm going to go, like, Energize plus Lemon, and then maybe Reap and Sow the next turn. Mm. But, I don't know. Yeah, this is, now I decide not to use the Energize Reap, and then Reap and Sow, so it seems kind of weird. Yeah, I, I like Energize Lemon a lot more here, but... Uh... The problem is I have to charge either Lyra or or the Reap and Sow to do that, or the Andromeda, and I don't really want to at that point. Like, if I drew mm. a worse card than Lyra... Mm. You should have just looked ahead and seen that you are going to draw Lyra, and then it would have been fine, right? Yeah, I'm not... Yeah, that sequencing was a little weird. I probably should have just charged a Lyra. Mm. Eh, no. No, Lyra's good. Lyra's great. Lyra's pretty I good. I would have charged the Andro. I would have I relied on my deck having yeah. essentially 12, no, 12 beaters. I would like that, But that's me personally, yeah. right? And we see Andros like just sucked it up and charged the laws, which is like really brutal that he couldn't find another light or light mana. 
That is rough. And I don't think his, his deck ratios are that like crazy. No, I think he has like 15 or 16 off the top of my head. Yeah, he like, should have, he should have plenty of light. Point. That's rough. Like even on even a dual civ light does it that turn. Mm. So that was yeah, that's rough. Um, yeah, and he hasn't seen mesmerize or spire puppet either, which is mm. rough. Here, I just charge the lemon and probably play the Lyra. I would jam Lyra, yeah. Yeah, it's weird. Because yeah, I can just next turn I can go like tree plus Lyra if he doesn't. It does stuff. Mm. Yeah, I agree tapping the skull cutter. Mm. Cause yeah, next turn I'm just gonna like Lyra the stalker and then kill the mm. scutter cutter most likely. Mm hmm Here uh oh, that's that's a rough top deck. Multiple. Yeah, it's just awkward. Feels bad, man. Probably just charge it, I think. Yeah, the... that's what you gotta do, and then you just hold. You just take the loss of tempo. But the the game... <laughs> yeah, the game feels like it's the... getting so out of hand, though. Yeah, I mean, it's not the worst. Like, if I don't have the Lyra follow up, like I would maybe, I don't even know. Maybe I just don't even offer the, the trade with the stalker. But if I do, then the Vang can just like outright kill it. Oh, mm. plays it. Yeah, that makes sense too. Just don't charge. Yeah, I don't mind playing this out here. Better yeah. to contest the board while you actually have some chance at board. Mm, the poke. Yeah, yeah, I guess. I think he's realizing that it's getting late, and if he doesn't win soon, it's all over. So I don't mind the poke. And exposing Underworld Stalker is like, well, uh, yeah. a lot of the time he ain't doing anything else with that meta. Makes sense. Like, at one hand, it's like, oh. I'm kind of, I'm, yeah, on one hand, I'm like kind of down for the poke mm. on my end at the same time. But then on the other hand, like, he kind of has to. I yeah. Play, yeah, I play the tree. Yeah, you go tree, Lyra. Because, yeah, that just protects me from discard on the Andromeda. Mm. And I get a clear board. Now, I'll pause here because I want to pose a question. Um, would you have considered going tree reap and then holding Lyra? Uh, because I would have been saying, all right, the only thing that like even remotely can test board is either like... Well, it's going to be Trox, Lyra, a Vang, right? Cause that's, uh, or an Agrix, because that's all he's got. And he's not close to Agrix, because he's on five still. Uh, mm -hmm. I might have considered holding Lyra as pseudo-removal. Yeah, just hold it. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wanted to play it to lock down the Stalker. Yeah. Right? Because yeah. then it comes, it, it's going to come and kill one of the, the other Lyra. Mm, but you've already I'm played three. Like... Yeah. So that's a blocker. Yeah, but like I don't want to lose my tree if I don't have to. Like I don't want to have to like jump it. Fair, but at this and point, also has, and I like at this also like Vang just comes mm -hmm. down, kills the tree, and then he trades Lyra. But it's like I get that like him like going defensive. It's not the like it doesn't really matter because mm -hmm. like if he's playing defensive, it's like fine for me. But I also don't want him to be able to like I don't know. Just like the more creatures I have in play, like the mm -hmm. better it is usually. Yeah. Here I am looking at deck lists again. I believe he's this one. Yeah. Um, looking at his blasts, I see two bone. Do I even see terror pit? Am I blind? Yeah, three terror pit, three stormfront. Okay, yeah, that's enough blasts. I was considering like two Lyras plus a Arbiter. If he doesn't have that many blasts and he doesn't have the mana and he doesn't have the dudes to contest... Yeah. Shoot. At a certain point, sometimes there's there's a point where you just go. I know I'm the controller, the controller deck on the side of like the mm -hmm. who's the beatdown. Yep. But maybe I just punch him in the face and he dies because he can't deal with a couple of six Ks. Yeah, I mean, and that's like a good position for me, right? Because like, mm -hmm. I if he he has to counter push my board to stabilize, mm -hmm. but at the same time, like I'm just like that's what I'm also dropping bombs. Yeah, because like, he can afford to counter push your board. He's got to be breaking shields now. Yeah, exactly. Mm -hmm. So, so it's I like interesting. I don't. Know. Yeah. I think I I just like developing it and then just like maintaining board presence. Yeah, no, that's fair. That's but fair. Just, but it's, yeah, it's worth considering. Yeah, because it's like I don't even know like what the the Lyra being removal is like. I guess like he plays a Vang, I play Andromeda, then the next turn I can like Vang the and or like Lyra the Vang or something. I guess, but mm. I don't know. Yeah, I just like pushing out. Yeah. Yeah, fair enough. 
but I don't know. Like mm. using the rope, the to be fair though, like a reaping so just gets me an extra card. It mm. makes sure like if I just draw like the third lemon, then I might just like break and not be able to play the andro, which is kind of annoying. Yeah, that's true. Then here he vangs. I'm pretty sure I put it in my graveyard, but we I think it gets corrected within the next couple turns. Or within the next turn. Yeah. Yeah. So yeah, he just vangs. And I draw, charge, andro. Looking very nice. Nice, 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 nice. And that's the game that's going to get to. Yeah, I don't think I attack this turn. But... No, I, I wouldn't attack this turn either, but that's... Yeah, that makes sense. Now he's kind of forced to Trox. Yeah, he could draw his Mez. Yeah, Mez does literally nothing in this instance. Makes the mana decision easy, at least. Interesting. He needs to get up to 7 if he wants to play Trox this turn. Yeah. As a reminder, Vang's effect only lasts till end of turn. So Vang like poking preemptively to uh like take a thousand off of these guys so they can't trade with Vang does not fly. Yeah. Because it, like I say, it only lasts till end of turn. Yeah, I mean yeah, he can definitely trox this turn, I guess. Kill the Andro, but then it's like, I don't know. It's just so weird. Yeah, it's it's kind of spending your, your resource too early. Hmm. I don't seeing that though. Yeah, that's yeah. I think I just I'm... use it. Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, there and we here we correct the iron roll. That's fine. Yeah, uh, not really relevant unless it goes to deck out because mm -hmm. I'm not shuffling or anything. I've used this just to ramp. Mm -hmm. I'm fair. not. I could have brought. I could have got back like cast lemon probably, and then just like played the lemon. That would yeah. make probably more sense. I'm honestly okay with the with the ramp. There wasn't anything too crazy in your mana, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah, uh, yeah it just... Mm. I, I don't mind it either way. It, it, I think that decision's fine. What's actually weirding me out, what I'm what I'm pausing for, is if he wasn't going to play Trox that turn, I might have held the Mesmerize. Because you were on 8 mana and 0 cards in hand, so if you top deck mm -hmm. something good and don't mana it and can't play it, then yeah, that's a good that, point. that makes a prime Mez bait, and you can always just lay Mez and Mana next turn to play Trox. So if he wasn't going to Trox that turn, I don't know. I might have considered holding Mez. Yeah, that's true. Definitely true. Yeah, that, that makes sense. Because, like, the only thing... Yeah, like, Agrix isn't good mm. next turn. Or it's not that... It's just whatever. Yeah. Makes There's sense. a lot of whatever. A lot. So, yeah, yeah and it's just Skullcutter and Lost Patrol happens. in the Grave, so Agrix is, like, okay, yeah, I think but I'm it's not a lot. I'm thinking about attacking here, mm. I think. But I think, oh man, in, in hindsight, I think I might have thought like both of those cards were Terra Pits, not Terra Pit Bone Blades. Mm. I'm literally, I'm pretty sure thinking back, I literally thought those were both Terra Pits in his mana zone. Oh, because they're both blank. I see. Yeah. That's a next level play. <laughs> when you're, yeah. when your hollows are so shiny that you can't differentiate them. Yeah. Thinking about this now, I was definitely like, okay, he's only got like one Terra Pit left. Mm-hmm. Yeah, but even then, like, the attack is, like, if he just pits the Andromeda, it's, like, really risky, <laughs> yeah. to be honest. Like, he just pits the Andromeda, he kill, he, and then the Vang kills one Lyra, like, just one Storm Spark. I'm down to, like, no cards. Especially, so yeah, especially with really... no cards in hand and no refill. That might have been... Yeah, it's definitely risky, especially facing two pits. Yeah. yeah. It is probably bad, <laughs> not a good play. Mm. Or Storm Spark, frankly, does plenty, yeah, because Storm that Spark Underworld Stalker can just jam into the Andro, and then... Yeah, yeah, exactly. Storm Spark, it's just he's killing two creatures mm -hmm. at least. And then if he has a pit too, like it's if I try to go for more, like if mm -hmm. I take a pit first and I don't know. It's rough. Yeah. Probably not good. Like I could have it would have made more sense. Yeah, if I had like maybe Helix played Wait, could I have Helix played a lemon? You could have Helix That's played true. a lemon, but it also would have left you at like five or six mana for the following turns, so you would have never seven. have gotten to anything super. I would have been at seven with the lemon in play, so if like the lemon blocks, then I go mm -hmm. to, Yeah, it would have been awkward, yeah. Yeah. But I just start breaking. Yeah. The bone blades. Ooh. Now at yeah. what point do you stop, if at all, is the question. Because technically you've got lethal here. Assuming I've no committed. blasts. But I've committed now. Mm-hmm. No, you've you 
you've already launched uh, launched yourself at the wall. At this point, you don't stop until you're flat against it. Yeah, and I'm just deciding. I think I go for the... Yeah, I just want to... Hmm, I don't know. I don't know what's right there. I think if you if you lose to one blast immediately, it's better to just break as many shields as possible. Yeah. Yeah, I'm thinking so in this spot I might as well. And then yeah, he just yeah. has nothing. Yeah, and then he didn't. So he didn't... I got there. I don't know if that that definitely didn't seem like it was the right decision cuz like the onus mm -hmm. was on him to make a move to like do anything. Yeah. I mean, you had board so... advantage and he you were already at critical mana and critical turns, so he couldn't attack your shields yeah. for risk of giving you a threat. And your every top deck that you have is inherently better than every head top deck he has. And yeah, he didn't get there in the end of the game. So it's kind of locked up no matter yeah. what. I don't know. Because like, the problem is if he just like answers... He has a way to answer most of my board. Mm -hmm. And then you can just untap, do stuff. And then... Mm -hmm. like, Yeah, just like a Storm Spark, like you said. like That might be good enough to just like stabilize him. And unless I... If I just like whiff on a few, car, a few draws, he's got enough cards. Like he plays a Laws. He plays like... Agrix and then yeah like he has to get through my shields but i mean he could do that and then like i don't know mm -hmm. this is a it's reminder for the people watching at home these these uh six cards well actually five because one of these terror pits is mana were his only outs so if he if we yeah. didn't see those things we just discredit everything else run up yeah. game two so, like he doesn't have that many blasts i guess but yeah, I don't know. That, it's probably not a risk I need to take in that matchup in that position. Mm. Probably greedy, but yeah. I mean, he also Whatever. had the he also had the bone blades, but like we say, was not relevant to the situation yeah. because you had six, seven, and nine mana cards. So, so I don't know. Yeah, I'm not sure if what was exactly right there, but I think it was right that. enough that even the punish wasn't that scary because he'd have to take at least a turn or two clearing your board. And in that time, mm -hmm. it's likely that you draw into another threat. So yeah. not like terrible, a, a li perhaps a little risky. It wasn't mm -hmm. like the absolute safest play, but your board state was still pretty dang good. Yeah. Probably wouldn't have been fine. Yeah. Yeah. So this hand he's got is a lot better though. He's got well, for sure. laws. He's got a cheap creature. He can curve into it. Mm -hmm. Yeah, un unfortunate that looks like he's probably going to have to mana the spire puppet turn one because he wants to play things two and three unless he manas a gloom hollow. Yeah, yeah. Uh, at I, least I to guarantee his light mana. Yeah, I mean I wouldn't really consider the ca casting the grudge weaver though. Like I don't know why you would want to play that card. So like I would That's think true. about I would definitely think about holding the spire puppet. Like you could speculate on um on charging the spire puppet. Mm. But the problem I know because you want to play turn three. Well, or no, you could I would speculate at least one turn, most likely. Like Fair. I'd probably lead on Grudge here. Mm. And then the only punish is if you draw like Lurking Skull Cutter and you maybe want to cast it. But I think with Gloom Hollow as a turn three play, I don't really I don't need both of those creatures in play. Like, I'm just kind of down for one of them. Yeah. So I would probably just, like, speculate the extra turn, try to draw another light mana mm. on turn two, and if I don't, then I charge the Spire Puppet turn two mm. is probably how I would play that. Yeah, that's fair. It looks like, based off this play, he's on the same uh, thought process that I was, where I'm just going to play my two on two and my three on three. Um, yeah, but I just like don't know what Grudge Weaver is ever doing. Yeah, and he drew the light yeah, mana. So and there's the punish. He just, yeah, he could have just charged, charged, and then he has like Gloom Hollow into Keeper into Light uh, into Spire Puppet. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and Which you I think correctly is... point out that the Grudge just doesn't do anything in this matchup, at least in this stage of the game. So yes, and he doesn't play it either. So yeah, that was just yeah. If you're gonna yeah, if you're gonna make that, that play, was... I you gotta commit to just playing your cards on curve. I think. Yeah, well, I, I think it's fine to not play. I, I mean, mean, yeah, yeah it's, I it's mean... still fine to not play it, but, like, the, the Spire Puppet turn one mana is kind of done to reward playing on curve, is the is the kind of the point I'm trying to make. Yeah, I mean, he could have, his justification still could have been just, like, if I want to I want to be able to cast my Lurking Skull Cutter on turn two, which is fine. Like if he evaluates that to be the case, mm -hmm. but when he doesn't do that, it feels like the indication was more that he was planning on playing the Grudge Weaver. But when he didn't, it feels like, yeah, it feels yeah maybe he was just thinking I'll play the Skull Cutter if I draw it and I want to leave mm -hmm. the 
door open to do that and also play gloom hollow turn three mm. but also interesting that he like held the grudge weaver over the second gloom hollow like yeah. I probably and interesting that he didn't play the gloom gloom hollow here either mm. yeah and now he's also... just played out the grudge weaver which we previously had said was yeah i i'm i'm not sure what's an ant what uh I don't want. To, I don't want to phrase this a mean way. Andro, Andros is good at this game. Uh, I I'm not sure what line of thinking he's taking here. I, yeah, I mean the relevance of the card is like. Yeah, I mean it like protects your laws, I guess, from like a, a lemon like attacking over it. But mm-hmm. like you have to attack with the like I don't. Yeah, it's weird. It's weird. Yeah. It's weird. Like I feel like Gloom Hollow would have just been better to have him play. Um, mm. And yeah, like if you had Spire Puppet, is that a Terra Pit? I can't. Yeah, it is a Terra Pit. Yeah. So like that Terra Pit could have been a Spire Puppet in his hand. Mm. So he could have been sitting on like untapped Terra Pit. I don't know how I'm playing this game. Like it's weird. Yeah, I'm trying to be interesting resilient that you mana the lemon there, but you needed the green mana. So I guess it makes sense. Yeah, I'm just like trying to play really defensive to Mesmerize by just like I want to protect both Andro and Verdant Helix. Mm. I guess I would have made so, the read that he probably didn't have Mez just because um Yeah, but you know, it's also spent five turns of nothing. But it's also like protecting from Spire Puppet. Like I know he doesn't have it in hand mm-hmm. at the time, but I don't want to like leave myself in a bad spot to one of those discard cards. True. And if you managed Spire Puppet turn one, then it's I think for you it's it's sensible to make the read that okay, he's probably got a second one then. Potentially, yeah. I, th- I think that's perhaps a safe read. So in that case, playing around it's not terrible. Yeah, and then the Energize, it was like, I wasn't sure. I wanted to have the option to Energize into Verdant Helix, which is mm-hmm. why I charged the Lemon. But when he played, when he turned out to have the Laws is when I like decided to charge. Like Maybe I should have been more certain that he had the Laws given that he charged a Spire Puppet, but I don't know if that's like... Mm. I think you just had so much sick stuff in hand. I I would have like with the two verdants. I think I would have been a little bit more aggressive manning anything else so that uh, you could energize a little bit earlier and then uh, maybe verdant earlier yeah. and then ramp to eight. Yeah, like I was just prioritizing like keeping the cards. Like I didn't want to play. I could have played the energize the turn before for sure, and then just I, th- I forget what I held in held in hand instead of charging the lemon. Yeah, I think it was like. I don't know, it was just really awkward, that sequence. And, like, Andros's hand shaped up pretty well, like, just drawing. Mm. If that was a Gloom Hollow, though, like, I think he would have been in an even better spot, right? Oh, for sure, because he couldn't poke with both of these. You'd be on one shield by now. Yeah, exactly. It would have been... He gave me a little bit more time. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, like, I think... Yeah, if I had just either committed to just, like, charging the Energize, playing the Lemon, it would have been better for me. Like, it would have got frozen by the lyra anyways at some point mm. but, it but he like also topic that field. lyra yeah so yeah i think i don't know if i play this game that well i was kind of like a little all over the place with my like mm. sequencing and he's just yeah he's just drawing really well here just like exactly yeah, what he's, he needs he's picking up exactly what he needs right at the right time so even though his early game draws and like his curve were a little bit weird boy did it work yeah that's just like not good enough. I mean, he doesn't die this turn. But yeah. Yeah. Like this is a spot I probably would have been dead already if he had the Gloom Hollow. Oh, for sure. Right. And then potentially even last turn. It gives me this gives me the chance to like uh yeah, but seeing the Storm Spark, yeah, it was rough. Yeah. Yeah, like I have to bank on Andro here, and then mm-hmm. I need like the third Storm Spark to stay alive, and then I need to do that into Cassiopeia, which is like pretty unlikely, um, to be honest. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So yeah, it was definitely relevant that he had the Grudge Weaver out. Yeah, so a little bit of awkward sequencing from him, but I think from myself as well. I probably should have been a little more, maybe made a little bit more uh, insightful plays based on what he was doing. Mm-hmm. I think you held that second storm spark for a lot longer than I would have, because it relies on having a a board to actually be able to beat over his board, and the way your deck works, you'll just pretty much never have that. You yeah. know what I mean? So it depends. Like when I forget when I drew it. To be honest, I wasn't looking as much at my own. 
Yeah, I think okay. I think you drew it. Oh God, I, I wouldn't I wouldn't have like a like a landmark in the bout to to designate it. But I think I got that, it out of my sh shields last turn or something. No, you had that know. for at least a couple of turns. Okay. Yeah. It was out of the shields at one yeah. point. I'm, I'm not going to run it back just so we can move to the next game. But um, but yeah. I think I think he had that. Yeah, he had that storm spark for quite a while. Here you are with four shields. Okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, but it's like, what is it? it doesn't really matter too much though. Like I'm nah. just. No, nah, but my point being, if like, you if you mana that, then maybe you make the energize play differently because I think this is the turn you played energize. Maybe it was the turn before. I don't know. I never. Uh, All right, play energize to mana. I mean. Oh, Maybe yeah, I'm like, confused. Maybe I'm just yeah, outright I confused. Just, yeah, I think just like sucking it up and playing the Energize there is probably worth it as well. Yeah, Energize or Lemon, but either way, you need to play like one of them on three. Yeah, and I yeah I wanted to hold. Yeah, because I drew that that turn. Yeah, I should have probably just sucked it up and played the Energize here and just like hope he didn't have. Yeah, you could have managed the Storm Spark right now, frankly. And just play the energize, yeah, that's probably the better thing. And then yeah, like the turn before I should have probably just charged the energize and played the lemon. Mm. Or yeah, because I again like I wanted to hold the double of Yeah, you wanted to hold like, double verd and, and double andro to play around um uh, potentially discard, yeah, yeah discard to, to coming discard, off yeah. the top. Yeah. And then Yeah, I don't know. It's iffy. I yeah. should have you definitely found I needed to find a way to play one of those cards. You're mm. right, yeah. Yeah. And to I be fair, even if you if even if you did play better, uh, if we live in fantasy land, then maybe Andros plays a much more aggressive curve, and he just punches your punches you in the face eight hundred times, like two scary dormals and a law, and you the game yeah. ends on turn five, no matter what. So, yeah, it's awkward. Yeah, I think like yeah, just playing the energize here seems like I have to just do it and then just race because like spending the one turn where he gets to like play to the board and break a shield anyways is like just not going to be good for me. True. Yeah. True. Yeah. I think so. Yeah. So, I mean, hindsight's always twenty twenty, right? Except in Kaijudo, because you could never justify every decision completely. But yeah, because like in this matchup, I have to like the worst case is he has laws, and I just need to insulate from that. So it's like either I keep the lemon, mm -hmm. play the energize of the turn, or just like play it last turn and just suck it up and charge one of the verdant helixes or maybe the andro. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I, I, there's yeah. definitely an argument to be made for all right we're past turn or three just... he he played grudge weaver which cost two on three that's a weird play for like mm -hmm. two or three different reasons he doesn't have discard i'm stopping playing around discard completely yeah there's there's an argument to be made for making that read but uh like we say with the spire puppet mana turn one like there's a bunch of reads that you could have made that potentially uh do not play out the way they yeah. are indicated yeah and like him drawing discard is also just some of the best cards that he's drawing into and oh, i don't sure. want to like yeah yeah you know so i think break yeah. Your threats yeah but if i do this line and charge the lemon i have to be like doing it with the idea that i'm gonna cast the energize no matter what i mm -hmm. think yeah mm -hmm. and the lemon yeah, can so, test so much better against laws yeah yeah that was just bad by me yeah. I, I needed to play the early game better and yeah, I think Andros also like probably could have played it better too. Mm. But, but his deck drew a lot better that. off the top in the mid game. Yeah. And I do not at all hate his decision to just poke every turn with the laws because you yep. don't have punish. Like you literally don't have anything you can do to stop a hexproof dude. Yeah, he's good. And if I do any, all my plays are just going to be spells to catch up, and he gets more pressure anyway. So yeah, it's just absolutely. Good for him. Yep. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I was probably too hopeful that he didn't have the laws when it was like pretty clear he did, mm -hmm. uh, especially after he plays the Grudge Weaver turn two, or yeah. turn three. Like it's, yeah. Mm -hmm. If he just played the Gloom Hollow, maybe it's less evident. But mm -hmm. I don't know. It's weird. Yeah, that's just yeah. rough. Rough. For sure. Three. All right. So going just jumping straight into game three. Um, sure. Opening hands, you've got Iron Will into Energize, and you've got a potential board clear with Tendril Grasp. That's not awful. Yeah. Um, Haven's mm -hmm. obviously a bit clunky, but Lyra's always relevant. He's got Lost Patrol Skullcutter, which is like a pretty dang good start in terms of early game aggression. 
uh, Bone Blades. Yeah, Bone Blades almost always ends up in mana in this matchup, I think, early, because you run so... F- you know, you, you run six mm-hmm. cards that are actually valid targets for Bone Blades. It's unfortunate that you have one of those six cards in hand, uh, but yeah. I, I think it's almost always right to mana Bone Blades early. The Trox and the Storm yeah. Spark are... Uh, if you had more discard, colors. there's like maybe the idea to hold it so that you can you can pitch the iron roll yeah you can get it out of the way but mm-hmm. yeah i think you, i mean you just charge like the storm spark and then probably like you said the bone blades yeah i think i'd choose to go for or second this game mm-hmm. which i'm not too sure about yeah against the mid-range deck especially when he's it's mid-range kind of functioning on the more aggro side of mid-range uh i might yeah. I might have chosen to go first just because he's going to be giving you resources by hitting shields anyway, and you don't want to be responding yeah, it, to him. It is kind of weird because it's like it's better if he has discard, but I already have the laws or the iron will tree, and mm-hmm. it's worse against the laws. Yeah. So if I have the iron will tree, I, even though he has more discard, I have the iron will tree, so I should just like play in. But at the same time, my hand just like didn't have that much going on. Mm. So I wanted to be able to like draw into. Get more cards so that I can like start doing my own game plan because I am pretty card hungry. I don't yeah. have like any card advantage in my hand, mm. so I think it was as much about just like making sure I can get my own deck off the ground, especially because I want to play the Iron World Tree. If I'm going first with no card advantage and I just play the Iron World Tree, I'm just gonna kind of get in a spot where like I can't really function for sure with how my deck operates, which I think was the justification. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's a great top deck. Yeah. Mana Trox, yep. Bone Blades, kill the Iron Will. Next turn, pitch whatever you go you want. Yeah, so yeah, he held the Bone Blades, keeps going. Mm-hmm. He's got a board, he chooses to go in. I kind of got punished for, I don't know, like I held the Lyra basically over the Tendril Grasp. Mm-hmm. Because like the Tendril Grasp unlocks the cut, the sieve that I want to be casting more so. And like, mm-hmm. Lyra's still good. Yeah, your only other option there, if you wanted to play the Energize, you would have had to um, uh, mana the Helix. Yeah, and then so. I draw to draw anyways, which is good. Mm. Unfortunately, he pokes the storm. That's always the worst feeling when they just snipe the storm spark right away. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. But yeah, I get the reap and sow. Dig. Find a haven. Yeah, and... that's all three storm sparks storm. accounted yeah, for. Yeah, I can I can count. Oh. Yeah, a little scary. So yeah, he's got now he's got to guess a decision. Does he want to charge to play up to the Lyra or play this? Mm-hmm. Mez chooses the Mez. I think this is a tough choice, but I think this is the right choice. I don't yeah. I don't mind charging a Lyra if you're not gonna have a board. Like it's a fat body, but we know he's got a bunch of six cost bodies. Yeah, and then it's like what does he take? Yeah. So I have two good six drop interactive cards and mm-hmm. a helix. And I think the pick is probably just Tendril Grasp. Agreed. It, like just gets rid of all his things. I think he takes the helix though. Because he doesn't want to he doesn't want you to ramp to the other two big things in the deck. Yeah. Like, there's an yeah, argument I, made for every single card in your hand, which is unfortunate. Yeah, I think it's between... Lyra's probably maybe maybe the least scary, because get he gets to, like, best case is, like, he breaks two shields this turn. Like, if I have a, a shield blast, I'm in a really mm-hmm. good spot. Like, if he just breaks an arbiter, you know, like, shield blasts are really good, but he's in a spot where he kind of just has to, like, hope I don't have shield blasts. So yeah. you kind of have to dismiss that. So yeah, yeah, he takes the helix. I think what does Lyra do? Like I untap Lyra, freeze one. Mm-hmm. The if he draws one a creature, in the he's in a really, really good spot to win the game. Yeah, I think if this, I'm not a hundred percent sure how to phrase this line of thought, but if he was going to put you up to five cards in hand, perhaps, especially with no cards in hand of his own and only being on five mana, and a lot of his big threats being six cost. Um, I maybe perhaps there's an idea you made for don't punch two shields, maybe only punch one at a time. Because mm-hmm. if you can't refill and then support this board, uh if if Andros, I mean, cannot refill and support this board, uh then putting five cards in your hand, well four and then you draw for turn, uh puts him in this situation where like, okay, I pitch one thing and now there's more threats and now I'm still scared. And Yeah. Like, yeah, the helix is just like yeah. 
Yeah. I don't know. I think taking Helix is just not that good, right? Because now he, like, Wait. if I untap in Helix, I'm just, like, facing lethal without a Seal Blast, right? Yeah, if he, if he, if he jumped on both of those shields to put you down to one shield, as he did, um, or I guess the prior turn, he was putting you down to three, but... Mm -hmm. I th I think the Helix is such a slow card that you're almost like grateful that if you play it because it gives you yeah. time to like draw into something else and like kind of yeah, fortify that's your the board. thing is like it's pretty clear that I'm probably just gonna cast a Lyra next turn mm -hmm. right yeah and it's, if, it's like, either a Lyra or a Tendril worth... for sure and then yeah I'm ca I'm casting the Tendril here mm -hmm. yeah like so like if the hierarchy is like Tendril Lyra and then Helix because I don't want to die <laughs> yeah so you lost me. Imagine not wanting to die. Yeah, exactly. So yeah, like I tendril here, which gives him like there's it just feels better. Like it gives him the ability to play his six drops if he top decks them, right? Mm -hmm. Oh, blah blah blah. Oh yeah, you can just move that. Yeah. Or whatever. Yeah. Yeah. So the yeah. actual timeout, oh, yeah, I'll just move it. But yeah, it gives him the ability to top deck these expensive cards. But the problem is Lyra. Like if I play Lyra, then mm -hmm. he just breaks my last shield. Any card off the top, any creature off the top is like I'm so far behind. I'd rather just Tendril kill both the cheap things and then Lyra what he plays, right? Mm -hmm. And he chooses not to play the Vang because he knows I have the Lyra, mm -hmm. which is fair. But it still feels, eh, it's tricky, right? Yeah, if it feels weird, but I actually I actually agree with it because he needs to get like enough value out of that Vang and he has to dodge that Lyra. But if he waits so long to dodge the Lyra, then it just gives you time to get to the big things. So maybe you just jam it for tempo. And then like my hand is stacked now. Uh, yeah, if you if you don't die it. immediately, <laughs> the game is yours. So yeah, he gets a spire puppet, but unfortunately mm -hmm. the spire puppet there's like no there's no winning here. No, none at all. So yeah, that was interesting. I think if he takes the the tendril, he's in a good spot. I mean, mm -hmm. he would well actually he wouldn't have probably gotten there because he would have bricked on the vang. Would have had to like just pass, and then I untap. I I end up. Um, well, actually, I don't even know because he breaks my last shield. It depends what my last shield is, right? Because yeah. he breaks my last shield, then the Vang, the lyra comes over the top, kills the one guy, and mm -hmm. I can still be dead. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. I think he could have won this game. Just taking the tendril. So yeah, like maybe me going second was bad. I think probably not something I need to do. Mm, well, to be fair, you did you did hit all three tendrils. You did top deck one later on. So uh, there would have been a tendril punish no matter what. Just did it come earlier or later? Question is, would he have won before you top deck that tendril? Hard to say. Yeah, and then he's yeah i mean it's pretty wrapped up at this point yeah this, this game's gig over um his trox is in mana too yeah his trox is in mana so yeah and that's outside of underworld stalker that's pretty much his only out against the haven so now we're just going through the motions yeah usually this it, is where it, i start hitting fast forward but uh the cockatrice fast forward is really aggressive this is <laughs> it is super aggressive so yeah i don't know i think this game yeah, I think the Mesmerize really cost him. Mm -hmm. um, that was his best chance, I think. Because, um, yeah, like, the, the Verdant Helix was, like, the third best card in my hand. Like, the third priority mm -hmm. six drop. But I think, like, the second game, I think we both played a little off. Yeah, that was a weird one. There was definitely points for iteration but on like, that. But, like, that was just... Yeah, Laws just got there. I mean, Laws is broken. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Broken as heck, so it just destroyed me single-handedly, pretty much. Mm. Um, Argument to be made here to just push for game, unironically. Yeah, but just I'm just break all five shields to go I'm for just, the two turn. I'm just chilling. Yeah. Just chilling. I'm gonna make him suffer. Play the Might absolute well. safest, most miserable control game that you can. Ooh, he's got the mess. Oh, this was. I think this was a funny moment. Yeah. Get him. Play the mess. Yeah. Do it. This is this is I think this is like the classic. They mez the Andro, and then I think I top deck the third one. Ah, oh, why fun. you gotta do him like fun. that? Why you gotta do him like fun. that? We'll see if my we'll see if my memory gets there. I'm pretty sure that's exactly what happens, and that's like the <laughs> that's it. Yeah, it takes Andro. Yep. Pretty straightforward. I mean, he's like, yeah, there, this game is like literally over ten days ago, but yeah, this game is dumpstered. But yeah, it was narrow. Like it was still narrow. Like he had mm. the opening start. 
Yeah, up until you dropped Andro, this game was anyone's. But he was top decking at five mana, and all of his stuff cost six. So yeah, I mean no that's hand. like one of the arguments too for like going second. Like I did, it just keeps him on low cards, right? Like he mm-hmm. wasn't able to mm-hmm. curve out into the Lyra. He wasn't able to like curve out in into his threats, right? Mm. You did remember correctly. Yeah, I just draw. Yeah, <laughs> just oh. for uh, insult to injury. That's BM. That is nothing but BM. <laughs> it is not. I think yeah, yeah and I think it. scoops <laughs> it up there. Yeah, that is that yeah. is fair. Oh so, yeah, I mean, so we're not starting basically the white screen. goes. Yeah, that match goes how you kind of expect, I guess. Is like mm. he doesn't have enough early game out aggro to to put it away, and then you stabilize and then you kill him. Yeah, because like he's got the cards in his deck to win the matchup. It's just he doesn't have enough of them, or like his the game plan, like the game plan is there, but he doesn't have the ability to like execute it consistently enough. And I think it was like similar to his match against you as well. Yeah. Uh, I don't. We don't think we've watched that one on the channel yet. But I think watching those sets, it was kind of the same. Like he just, the game he had like the laws steamroll draw. Like that's he just it, it's packed away real quick. Mm-hmm. But if he doesn't turns have out laws is good. Who knew? Yeah, but like he, he's just in a three game set. Like it's he's kind of the underdog because he can't stitch those draws together often enough. Mm-hmm. But, I think uh, uh, if he's gonna go in the mid range package, a card I really like in this kind of deck is a Cloudworm, because the utility is crazy. Cloudworm. And, yeah, and the recursion is good. Yeah, yeah, it's all right, yeah. it's all right. I think, I think it conflicts with Spire Puppet a little too much, but yeah. uh, he needs... Yeah, is just like a huge opportunity yeah. cost slot. Yeah, I think, uh, nice. yeah, he needs, it, it, he needs either more draw, or more aggro, or more something, because right now, uh, the way this deck is positioned, unfortunately, uh, he's going to beat up on aggro decks that we don't have um yeah i mean in this this field was like we so far in the tournaments that we've ran mm-hmm. there's been a lot of there's been a fair amount of aggro and then yeah, some dragons I mean, and I some giant control i mean there was zero in the two that i played in there were zero haven decks yeah mind, if i remember correctly yeah like there was a number of controls but they weren't like andro haven controls mm-hmm. but this yeah. time we have two and then we have your control as well so mm-hmm. yeah uh, unfortunate yeah. positioning in that mm-hmm. sense but yeah i i mean i think there's like definitely stuff here with the mid-range plan but i think uh, yeah mm. it just ran out of Maybe resources the the yeah. unfortunate part of, of mid-range that doesn't run water or some other kind of like alternative draw such as like breaking your own shields or something is mm-hmm. if your opponent doesn't break your shields you run out of cards exactly which is why like going second is like a strategy for these decks sometimes mm-hmm, for sure um yeah i'm not sure like that it's something to explore like even if he's p- trying to position aggressive like he's not always trying to break right away mm-hmm. so it's definitely like valid to like maybe still consider going second yeah from his perspective just to like try to find the laws that much more often try to stitch those like curves together more appropriately mm-hmm. and like, to make you have one less card because then it makes all your mana decisions that a little bit harder exactly and like yeah like the the like the thing is like discard is good but it discards from both players right like spire puppet obviously is goes up on advantage but mesmerize mm. doesn't like mm. you're still just like pitching a card to trade for their card which reduces mm. both players positions and if you don't have the card advantage to like alleviate that then you're just gonna go to a top deck war at some point yeah, right. mesmerize rewards that by letting you see the whole hand, so you can plan your future turns far more efficiently. But even then, yeah. like in terms of just general card economy, there that's uh, insubstantive, right? That's not that's not a worth a card necessarily. You could say it's the equivalent yeah, yeah. of a card, but it's physically that's one less mana or one less draw or whatever. Exactly. So yeah, I mean yeah, there's a lot of like virtual things going on with it where like you strand other cards in their hand that don't matter because you take away the one that like does if there's like synergy packages and so- stuff like that. But mm. but yeah, just raw advantage. Like you're trading one for one, and sometimes that's just like not that good. But yeah, yeah, interesting matchup, interesting match for sure. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, it'll be nice to see some more going down. We're decent ways into the event so far, so. Yeah. Hopefully we'll get some more matches. Mm. To I think recover. we will. I know I'm going to be keeping all of my replays just in case. So, Yeah, I have access to most of them, I think. I Good. should be able to scrounge up whatever I can. 
But uh, yeah, as always, thank you for coming on, Stence. It was a pleasure to have you. Hopefully, we'll do a number of uh, videos down the line. Yeah, so, this is a lot uh, of fun. You. I'm I'm enjoying these. Thank you for having me, as always. No problem. Nice to get the other insights. Oh yeah, absolutely. And, uh, thanks. Yeah, thanks to everyone for watching the videos as well. Mm -hmm. um, stay tuned for more uh, down the line, and we'll uh, see you next time. Yep. Bye. Peace.